Happy Easter, everyone. I take this opportunity to welcome you to our service this morning on this glorious day. Not just a day that is beautiful with sunshine and warming temperatures, but on this glorious day when we gather together to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of all of God's promises and the reason that we are able to gather knowing that in all the circumstances of our lives, God is indeed with us. I extend a very warm welcome to our visitors who are here sharing with us. We do hope that you find us to be a, a warm and a welcoming congregation and that your time with us this morning is one which is uplifting. And of course, we say a very special hello to those of you who are listening in on VOWR this morning and those of you who are watching on Facebook and on YouTube and it's always wonderful to have you being a part of what we share in. And we do hope that this service proves to be a blessing for all of you. I would invite you to take your seats. There are just a, a couple of announcements to share with you. I'm going to begin with a word of welcome. We have quite a bit of music that is going to be shared in our service this morning. And we have some special guests with us who are now standing in the front. And uh, these are the young virtuosi. Uh, under the leadership of Jennifer Johnson. And uh, we are thrilled to have Elizabeth Ackerman, Sidney Chislett, Sam Farkison, Olive Fortune, Tegan Graham, and Rachel Hammond taking part in our worship service this morning. We also have, you'll see in a few moments when they process into the church, our Hearts and Hands Choir are going to be sharing their gift of music with us today as well. And it's always wonderful to have them under the leadership of Annabeth Lovies and Andrea Stowe. And, uh, and Annabeth as well is going to be sharing her gift of song with us this morning. So it is indeed a, a true opportunity for us to come and to celebrate and to respond to the psalmist who invited us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Um, the only other announcements I'm going to share with you, number one, um, just uh, for information's sake, the church office is going to be closed tomorrow. Uh, it will reopen again on Tuesday morning. So um, if you do have any, uh, anything that you need to address with the church office, uh, please keep that in mind. The other thing I would lift up to you, since we have a good audience here uh, and a, a crowd watching um, by other means and listening by other means, our church is going to be hosting two flipper dinners coming up. Um, the first of those flipper dinners is for May the 11th. The second is on June the 1st. Both of those are going to be held at 5.30 in the evening, and tickets are now available for those at a cost of $30, and you can get them by speaking with Marvin Barnes, Phoebe Shepherd, or calling the church office. And that is all I am going to say about flippers today. <laughs> I am going now to invite the young virtuosi to share with us their ministry of music as our children bring forth our Christ candle.
Thank you so much. That was lovely. Let us not lose sight of the significance of lighting our Christ candle today. We do it each and every Sunday as a reminder that Christ came to be the light of the world, but after having moved from the light being extinguished on Good Friday, the uncertainty of Easter Saturday, we light this candle this morning in celebration that the light of the world has returned and the darkness shall never again overcome it. Please join with me as we share together in our call to worship and our prayer of approach. On this glorious Easter day, we have come to celebrate the greatness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. On this great day, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. My sisters and brothers, let us rejoice. Alleluia. 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 Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the king of creation. On this most holy of days, the one whom humanity had thought to destroy has risen triumphant from the tomb. My brothers and sisters, let us rejoice. Alleluia. 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 Jesus has died and is risen. On this holy day, we celebrate our new life in the risen Christ. Through the death of Jesus, the weight of our sin has been lifted from us. Through his glorious resurrection, we have become sons and daughters of God. My sisters and brothers, let us rejoice. Alleluia. 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 Come, let us praise the living God. Joyfully sing to our Savior. Let us pray. O God of all our days, we come this morning with eager anticipation. We seek to know you, to see you, to touch you. Open our hearts that we might experience you anew. Open our lives that we may be faithful witnesses to your resurrection. May we with shouts of joy proclaim your steadfast, liberating love to all people everywhere. In the name of the risen Christ we pray, amen. And our opening hymn is hymn number 155 in the Voices United. I would invite you to stand as you are able or comfortable to sing Jesus Christ is risen today.
Please be seated. And I forgot completely that Stephen was also going to be sharing in the leading of our congregational hymns. Thank you so much, Annabeth and Steve. As we share together in God's word as it's revealed in scripture, we turn now to the Acts of the Apostles, reading from the 10th chapter and beginning at the 34th verse. Let us listen for the word of God. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God knows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This ends the reading of our first scripture lesson. We do ask God's blessing on the reading of his word. Come, all who are perplexed and all who are full of wonder. God reigns, and in God all things are possible. Let us rid ourselves of the ways of death that we may embrace new life in Christ. Let us confess all that hurts and destroys that we may build anew as God directs. God is ready to hear and answer and roll away stones. Let us pray. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the tomb, you have given us the sure sign of your power to deliver us from sin and death and to renew our whole creation. We confess that we still fall into doubt and fear. We continue to cling to selfish ways and doubt your power to make all things new. Forgive our lack of faith. Have mercy on our weakness. Raise us from the death of sin that we may live with Christ in the joy of his resurrection now and forever. For our sake and in Christ's name we pray. Amen. People of God, why do you seek the living among the dead in an empty tomb? Are you afraid? Are you uncertain? And are you uncomfortable here? Our wounds are deep. We have turned away from that man. We have broken with him and seek his fellowship. Do not dwell on your wounds any longer, for he has risen to heal us. He has risen to forgive us. He has risen to change us all and bind us together now. Christ has risen to forgive us. We are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And at this time, our Hearts and Hands Choir are going to share with us their gift of song.
two. Stay where you're two. I'm coming down with you guys. There you go. Hi. You know something? I got a bag of mini Easter eggs and I got a Mr. Crispy bunny with huge long ears. I've got a mysterious Easter box that I wouldn't open yet. And I got homemade fudge from the Easter bunny. But none of that was as precious as the gift you just gave all of us. That was... I'm always amazed because uh, growing up, when I was in a children's choir, we used to sing silly songs all the time. They were good, but they were always silly songs. But I don't think I've ever heard a, a young choir like you guys in a church singing Dona Nobis Pacha. It's amazing. And it's truly a wonderful part of our Easter celebration. What is it that we celebrate today? I know that you guys celebrate the Easter Bunny coming. Yep. I just want to say something. What were you going to say? So, a few days ago, it was Wednesday and Thursday, we watched the movie about the Christian movie. Did you? And we learned about the story about God. Absolutely. It's a story about God. Yep. I know what we celebrate. What do we celebrate? Absolutely. Today we celebrate Jesus being risen from the grave. On Good Friday, Jesus died on the cross. And all of his friends and all of, thank you, crackers to go with, oh boy. On Good Friday, Jesus died on the cross. And all of his friends, all of his followers were broken hearted. And it's understandable. We always are very sad if we lose a loved one. And they were really, really sad. But on Easter Sunday, they found out that God had the power to raise Jesus from the dead and to give him new life. And when we celebrate that, we celebrate the fact that God gives all of us new life. That no matter what we do, come on down, Harrison. Come on down with Grampy. Gonna come up and sit on my lap? Maybe not. But we celebrate the fact that God is always with us. That the love of Jesus is always with us. That not even something as what seems so final as death, is able to separate us from God's love. In those times, yeah, you're going to sit up, excellent. In those times when we perhaps are scared, or in those moments when we don't know what's going on, or in those moments when we feel all alone, Easter Sunday is the promise that we are never truly alone. That God always cares for us, always loves us, and is always with us, no matter what. So on this day, as you enjoy your Easter Bunny treats, your chocolate, your fudge, all of that neat stuff, it's a reminder of the sweetness of God's presence. It's a reminder of all the good things that God brings us. And let us always remember that God never leaves us.
That's all I wanted to share with you guys today. Now today, because we've got such special music and whatnot, and we want you to be a part of our Easter celebration, we're going to ask you to stay up in, in the congregation with us rather than go out to Hearts and Hands. So if you want to sit together or whatnot, and, or if you want to go and sit with family, you're able to do that as well. But before you go, we're going to ask you to say a prayer with me, and we'll ask our big brothers and sisters to pray with us as well. <laughs> So let's bow our heads and we'll say together, Dear God, thank you for the joy of Easter. We are grateful for the treats that come from the Easter Bunny, the blessings we find with family and friends, but above all else, we thank you for your love that never leaves us. Amen. And I thank you guys for coming up and spending some time with me. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Do you want your crackers back? They're not yours? Whose crackers are they? They're not mine. Oh. Harrison claimed them? Would you like some crackers? No? Okay. <clears throat> if the service goes too long today and you're feeling a bit hungry, there's crackers up here. Come and help yourself. Our minute for mission for this morning is entitled, Your Generosity increases food security. When did you first become aware of climate change? When did you first feel its effects? In Canada, we have always experienced wildfires and droughts, hurricanes and winter storms, but once in a lifetime disasters are happening with far greater frequency than ever before. Fortunately, to date, we have had the resources to cope with the effect of weather's worst. Many others around the world face different challenges. In Zambia, Marit Mabenga has felt the deep impacts of climate change. Droughts are killing her crops, wells are drying up, forcing her to walk farther and farther to fetch clean, safe drinking water. Necessities are scarce, and prices are soaring far beyond Merit's modest reach because of climate change. The impacts of climate change can be overwhelming, but as always, the Bible shares its wisdom. 1 Corinthians 12 reminds us that there should be no divisions in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Thanks to donors like you, Merritt has planted a diverse selection of vegetables and now harvests three times a year. This means increased food security for her family and greater ability to access education. In fact, Merritt has earned enough <clears throat> to send her son to college. Her children are her future. Merritt needs them not just to survive, but also to thrive. Your gifts to mission and service go directly toward our programs and partners around the world. Every dollar you give makes a difference because it helps someone who needs it. Thank you for your generosity. Mary Magdalene wept outside the empty tomb. When our own lives seem empty and our fears control us, we too cry tears of frustration and uncertainty. The resurrection of Christ calls us to live lives filled with hope, motivated by love, and guided by peace. Your gifts and offerings will help us to live the message of our faith as we continue the mission and ministry of Christ's church here and throughout the world. Let us give generously as our offering is received. And as your offerings are received, I would invite you to remain seated as we sing hymn 164, The Day of Resurrection.
would invite you to take your seats as we share now our Easter memorials. With gratitude and thanksgiving, Wesley United Church wishes to acknowledge the following memorial gifts presented to our church in loving memory of the following. Sybil and Gordon Pete, Bob and Andrew Lee, from Heather, Brenda, Gordon and families. Winnie and Roy Sellers, from Don, Heather and family. Parents William and Mildred Mercer and Wilbur Sparks, from Deborah and Bill. Parents Lillian and Eldon Hancock and Emmanuel and Mary Gillum from Wayne and Jane Hancock and families. Parents Hubert and May Stokes and Edmund and Eveline, Evangeline Button and other loved ones from Sharon and Lorne. Janet and Ronald Pete from daughter Marilyn Clark. Loved ones from Louise Piercy. Bob Lee and Andrew Lee from Brenda, Suzanne, Robert and family. George Crane from daughter Joan Crane, David Chafe, wife Gladys Crane, and family. Wade, Eugene, and Helen Worthman, Judy Purcell, and Wanda Jacobs from Juanita, Michael, and Amanda. Parents Robert and Grace Crowley from sons David and Robert, wives Tammy and Mary, and grandchildren David, Emma, and Ian. Parents Herbert and Louise Jenkins, brother and sister-in-law Roy and Jean Jenkins, Herbert Jenkins Jr., Trina Hodge, and Daryl Smith from the Jenkins and Smith families. Howard Herridge, husband of Rennie, father of Doreen and Glenn, father-in-law of Chris and Karen, and grandfather of Emily and Riley. Parents Edmund and Evangeline Button, Uncle Jack Penn, Aunt Jane Adams, and other loved ones from Doreen and Bill. Sister Shirley Hillier from Sandra. Parents Walter and Daisy Burry from daughter Margaret and son-in-law Don Jacobs. Selby G. Humphreys from wife Ethel, son Keith, daughter Rosalind and son-in-law John Smith. Granddaughter Rebecca and husband, Pierce Evans and great-grandson Felix Evans. Jabez Late King from wife Emily. Father and grandfather Douglas Dwyer from Lynn Gerard, Julia, and Michael. Jacob and Elizabeth Chafe from son Bruce Chafe and family. Thomas and Rebecca Cook from daughter Elizabeth Chafe and family. Edward and Kevin Burry from Violet, Ivan, Faye, and Dave. Gord Cousins from friends Sally and Chris. Husband, father, grandfather, Herbert Shepherd, and son-in-law David Hillier from Phoebe and family. Parents Alfred and Cass Drodge, Sister Marilyn Benson, Sister-in-law Joan Drodge, and brothers-in-law Bob Hollett and Herb Head from Mildred Cousins. Parents Alfred and Cass Drodge, Sister Marilyn Benson, in-laws Joan Drodge, Gord Cousins, and Herb Head from Jesse Hollett. Husband and father and grandfather Robert Hollett from Jesse and family. Parents Hiram and Marida Humphreys from daughter Louise and Harold Parsons. Gladys and George Moores from daughter Joan and family. Husband Samuel Horwood and other loved ones from wife Helen Horwood. Evangeline Button from Tim and Alan Matthews. Parents Catherine and Errol Seward. Brothers Joe and Leif Seward from Margaret Krotsky and Marilyn Summers and families. Parents Lawrence and Susie Smith from daughter Dawn Smith. Monroe and Hazel Mercer from Vivian and Robert Young. Parents Monroe and Hazel Mercer from Melissa Mercer. Bessie Noseworthy from husband Bert and family. Parents Chesley and Rita Smith from children Sandra, Judy, Wayne and Cynthia. Parents Howard and Phyllis Barrett from Ian Barrett. Loved ones from Alvin and Mildred Tucker. Roy Saunders from wife Jeanette, 
and daughters Lorna, Denise, and Tracy, parents from Ern and Doris Parsons, Herbert Manthorne from Marilyn, Janice, Jillian, and families, Clayton and Jane Mercer from Brenda and Harold Luscombe, and the gift of the bulletin which today is dedicated to the glory of God and presented in loving memory of husband Gord Cousins from wife Mildred. Let us pray. We dedicate this offering, as well as those given through par and other means, and all our resources for drying tears and sharing good news of peace. Make us instruments of healing and channels of forgiveness, so all your children may realize opportunities of new life. We rejoice in the promise of the resurrection that we are privileged to share. Amen. The New Testament lesson this morning is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, reading verses 1 to 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Thanks be to God. Our responsive psalm this morning is Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2, 14 to 24, in Voices United, page 837, parts 1, 2, and 3. Please stand as you are able as we read responsively. Let Israel now say, God's love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. Let those who fear God say, God's love endures forever. God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. There are shouts of joy and deliverance in the tents of righteousness. 
The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. The right hand of God does mighty things. I shall not die but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. God will be punished me, but he will not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of the temple, that I may enter and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. Through it the righteous shall enter. I thank you, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The son which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice in the new life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We offer thanks for sharing with us our last two scripture readings. Finally, we turn now to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, reading from the 20th chapter. Let us hear once again the account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple sent out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This ends the reading of our scripture lessons. We ask God's blessing on the reading of his word.
Thank you, Annabeth. That was gorgeous. And thank you, Jennifer and David. Let us pray. In the meditations of our hearts and the words of my lips, if they be your words, be acceptable in thy sight. May your message come to your people, either through me or despite me. Amen. I wish that there was some way that I could capture or, or that we could all capture just the depth of joy that this day means. And at times it's a struggle because it is a familiar story. It's one that some of you have heard for decades. We know the events leading up to Easter. We know what happens on Easter. And at times we become very comfortable with the message. But when we become comfortable with what we celebrate this day, it truly does lose some of its power and some of its impact. It's important for us to, to try and recapture the Easter story by putting ourselves in the place of the disciples and the followers of Christ, those who knew and loved him dearest, those who had journeyed with him throughout his ministry, who had heard his teachings and his promises, and yet who on Good Friday thought that it had all come crashing down. And then we pick up the story on Easter morning. And the story begins with the women. The women who went to fulfill their obligation to show their final act of love towards their teacher and their friend. And that final act of love would be to give him a proper burial. Because the approach of the Sabbath on Good Friday meant that they couldn't properly prepare his body. He had to be taken down from the cross, put into a borrowed tomb, and sealed. But once the Sabbath had passed and they were able to work again, they wanted one last act of love to properly prepare and preserve his body. And they were so anxious to do that, that they woke up very early in the morning to head to the tomb. Once they got there, they found the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. Now, we listening to the story thousands of years later, and having heard it over and over again, know why the tomb was empty. But for them, they believed that the religious leaders, the Roman authorities, had actually broken into the tomb and taken Jesus' body away so that that tomb would not become some kind of a shrine to a martyr and that people would gather there that they wanted to get rid of the body and put an end to this new movement that Jesus had started. And that's where Mary's words come from. They've taken our Lord away, and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and John rush to the tomb. They look in. They see the cloths there, the, the bandage that was around his head. They give it a quick once over, and they say that she's right. They've taken his body, and they go on. Mary, overwhelmed with grief, remains. And even when Jesus appears to her, her grief is so deep, her eyes are so clouded with tears that she doesn't recognize him. Why are you looking? 
Or who are you looking for? She said, they've taken him. Just tell me where you've put him so I can go and get him. To be touched by that depth of grief, to not even recognize him when he was standing there face to face. That's how deep and dark their darkness was on that first Easter. And then with a word, it all changes. Mary. And with that, the veil is lifted. That personal connection is reestablished once more. And, and her only was Rabboni, teacher, master. He was back. Never to leave again. It's almost impossible for us to understand just what that meant, what that encounter meant. But it's an encounter that we, as God's children, have every day. Because God speaks to us by name in that same manner, each and every day. Easter is the celebration that nothing in this world could separate God from God's people, not even death itself. That God overcomes in order to be with us. And the message of Easter, the joy of Easter, is that understanding that no matter what depths we might walk through, no matter what darkness we might experience in our lives, and we all experience it, that presence of God, that love of God, those promises of God, never, ever leave us. The notion of resurrection and and rising from the dead and life eternal are things that, that we don't experience in a physical sense in our lives. When we lose loved ones, there is that finality to their passing, to their death. But the promise of the resurrection is that that death is not an end, that the love of God walks with those individuals through death into life eternal, never to be separated again. And the promise that comes to us is even in the midst of our deepest sorrow after losing a loved one, is that our loved one is not gone, is not forgotten by God, but is welcomed into the eternal presence of God. And we hold to that promise that one day we too will be welcomed in that way. No matter what our challenges may be, no matter what our darkness may be, God says, I will never leave you. You will always be with me. And as we gather on this Easter Sunday, as we celebrate with, with beautiful music, with the joy of our children, with the fellowship of those known to us and, and visitors and strangers who are among us, we do so knowing that God is here with each and every one of us and that God will go with us, each and every one of us. And as we go forth into this world, we are invited to take that message with us. Just as Mary took it and shared it with the disciples, I have seen the Lord we too are invited to bring that message into a world that aches to hear it and more than that, aches to feel it. It is not enough for us simply to say, Alleluia, we have seen the Lord. We are invited to let others feel the presence of God through us, with us. On this glorious day, let us give God thanks and praise for a love that never leaves us, and let us strive to bring that love to each 
and everyone we meet. Thanks be to God. Our gracious and loving God, we come before you now with word, with music, with thankful hearts, in joyful celebration of what this day has come to mean and continues to mean for us. This day of resurrection in which all of the promises that have been offered to us are fully realized. How the message of hope and healing, how your message of inclusion and fullness of life are brought to fruition. The powers of the world could not overtake you. Even death itself could not hold you within its grasp. And we draw a strength and a comfort in knowing that, in understanding that. For we know that through you, the powers of the world and even death itself hold no sway over us. Yes, we too have our moments of doubt, our moments of questioning, just as Mary and the disciples did. But we know that even in those times of doubt and fear and uncertainty, that you make your presence known to us, that you speak to each of us by name, and you ask us to respond to your world in that same way. To go out from these places of worship and to embrace your children. To seek them on a closer level. To speak their names, if not with our lips, then more importantly, with our hearts. You call us, O oh God, to a, a new life, a life that moves beyond the physical, to accentuate and to lift up the spiritual, a life that invites us to see others as fellow journeyers on your pathways. You call us to give drink to those who are thirsty, food to those who are hungry, to minister to those who are sick, to visit those who are in prison. Not to walk by those who are struggling on the street. Not to turn our backs on those who are fighting demons in their lives. But instead, to live lives that reflect your love and your care. And so we pray for your world and for its people. 
for those who live under the threat of violence and war, for those who hunger and thirst in very real ways, for those who struggle just to get by day after day after day. Open our hearts to their need, open our ears to their cries, and guide us in our responses that we may touch their lives in very real ways, sharing your love freely and openly. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for the fellowship that we find here, and we pray that you would enable us to continue to share that fellowship far beyond the walls of this building. We think, O oh God, of those who are known to us this day who have special needs, those who are unknown or whom we remember in the silence of our hearts. We lift up to you this day Jean Forward and Herb Morrison, Jim Delaney and Joyce Pye and Mandy Hines Coates, Bill Aiken and Bob Pound and Regina Ash Ralph. We think of Pearl Morgan and Joan Balsam, Shirley Bragg, Blanche Baldwin, Vera O'Keefe, Gladys Crane, Peggy, Ted, Diane. We pray that you would speak to them to those who remain unnamed and to their families of your loving, caring presence. Let them know that you are at work in their lives for your good. And we ask those same blessings upon our own lives. For we all stand in need of the renewal of the resurrection story in our lives. That understanding that you are always with us that you are always there to guide and protect us. And we pray that in knowing that, you would give us the courage, and the strength to live out each day striving to respond to your highest of callings, that each and every one of us should let our lights so shine before others that they might see our good works and give you the glory and we pray together now those words that Christ taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before I, we sing our closing hymn, once again, I would like to offer my thanks to the young virtuosi for their beautiful ministry of music to us, to Annabeth and Steve, to Andrea, and to our Hearts and Hands Choir. And I would invite you one last time to show your appreciation to them all. Sorry, David, I forgot to put you on the list too. <laughs> Our closing hymn, number 173, Thine is the Glory.
please turn to the order of service as we share now in our commissioning. When others dismiss your story as an idle tale, who will you be? Resurrection people with Easter in our hearts. When the world seems to be crumbling around you, remember who you are. Resurrection people with Easter in our hearts. When despair would seem to squelch all hope, believe in who you have become. Resurrection people with Easter in our hearts. When it is hard to persevere against all odds, trust in God who names you. Resurrection people with Easter in our hearts. As we follow Christ into the world, may God help us remember who we are. Resurrection people with Easter in our hearts. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and abide with us from this time forward and forevermore. Amen. God bless and stay safe.